There are, there are times when you are very close to the story and you do not realize that this story n needs to be told again and again, uh, to not only to the local audiences but to the international audiences. And when foreign correspondents come in, uh, they have a fresh pair of eyes to look at the story. Where they can go wrong is that without understanding the story, the local conditions, and without uh, really talking to the right people, if they do a story, yes, of course, the international audience will be able to listen to or uh, watch the, that story, but that can at times be very misleading, and that is where the danger lies. It may create an impression that foreign correspondents come to their country with a specific agenda rather than doing good journalism. I think uh, in conflict regions or regions which are involved in some kind of tension or conflict, there remains a major challenge. You take the example of Pakistan and India, uh, because the two countries have not been able to deploy correspondents for their newspapers and television in each other's countries, uh, uh, the overall context is missing from their journalism. If there are skirmishes, say, on the line of control in Kashmir, uh, uh, there, it's, it's very difficult for me to get the information from the other side or to understand what is, is happening on, on the other side. So I'll end up doing a story on the basis of the official information that is provided to me by my own government. And that is where I would say it's not false reporting, but it is not the whole picture. So I am not being able to provide the whole picture of what is happening on the, on the border to my readers, to my audiences. And that is where the challenge comes of better uh, collaboration, better coordination between journalists on, on the two sides of a conflict area just to let your readers and audiences know what the real story is.